Hello there, and welcome to this series, Introduction to Google Colab for Research. And this time, we are going to take a look into PyTorch short audio using TensorBoard with PyTorch inside Google Colab environment. So we will put together a couple of tutorials that are available from pytorch.org slash tutorials. So here you'll find a series of tutorials. You take a look at audio, have here a torch audio tutorial where you learn to load and pre-process data from a simple data set. And here there is this speech command recognition where you learn how to format an audio data set and then train and test an audio classifier on this data set. So here we have this tutorial and you can press here and run in Google Colab and it will open this Colab notebook here. So this tutorial, we are going to add tensor board so we can also visualize some uh, results, the um, experiment. We are going to use Torch Audio, used to load audio to make some transforms. There are some functions available. We can use Torch Audio to audio signals together with PyTorch for an audio experiment. So we what we did is we went to pytorch.org slash tutorials, then we click on this speech recognition, and then we clicked on run in Colab, and that's what we're here. First thing we're going to do, we want to make things faster, so we are going to change the runtime to use GPU. Yes. Now we are going to set matplotlib to inline, so it displays matplotlib cells. Here we are going to use GPU, so we are going to install Torch Audio, and also the um, PyTorch specific version. We also we want some interactive demo to listen to audio recorded from a microphone, so we will train this model, and later on we can also record our own voice saying some commands, and then see if the model can classify correctly. But we are going to take a look uh, into this with more detail later on. So here we are importing Torch, we are importing some other parts of the Torch library. We are going to use Torch Audio. We will have access to a data set of the speech commands available in um, Torch Audio by Torch. So let's run this cell to install is uh, what is needed for this tutorial and also import some libraries. So now everything is installed. We can check that we are using CUDA, we are using the GPU. Next, we are going to import the data set. The data set is taken from this uh, speech commands. So this is a data set for limited vocabulary speech recognition. In this case here, we are using this uh, speech commands that it's a torch dataset version of the dataset. And we have 35 commands spoken by different people and all audio files are about one second long. And here, what we are doing is we are cre creating a subclass split into the standard training, validation and testing subsets. And later we are just defining a training set and a test set, so we are not using the validation in this tutorial. So here we are having just the training set and the test set. So let's, before I move into this, it's interesting to notice that we are importing here PQDM. PQDM it's a useful tool for um, to use a progress bar. So we will notice that when we are training our model, we will see a progress bar saying how many percent of the audio being already used and trained. So we are going to see this in action later on. So now we can run the cell and it will create this train set and the subset. 
we see also that for example if we train the strain set it will give us waveform sampling rate a label speaker id and a uterus number in this case uterus is the label so the waveform is the audio signal the sampling rate is the sampling rate then we have the label and also the id of the speaker and the number of the label we can see that we are importing speech commands from, from uh, Torch Audio datasets. Here on Torch Audio datasets, we have datasets as subclasses of Torch UTUS data dataset. They would have a get item and also a length methods implemented, and they can be used together with a data loader. And here we see that we have these speech commands. And it creates the, the data set for speech commands. And this is what we are using here. So now we created our training and testing split of the data. And here, for example, we are calling this train set zero, will give us this um, audio signal, the sampling rate, the label, the speaker ID, and the label number. And here we can, for example, print the shape of a wave form of the audio signal so it's uh, using the sampling rate of uh, 16 kilohertz if we have one second at 16 kilohertz then we have 16,000 samples and here we have the plot of a waveform so our signal is part of the train set and here we can see the list of all labels available in the data set. So we have these commands that people saying backward, bad, bird, cat, dog, down, eight, five, and so on. So for example, we can make a small modification here in this tutorial so we can see by the way, this tutorial is provided by PyTorch documentation found here PyTorch.org tutorial. So uh, I didn't make this tutorials, just small modification so we can have two um, waveforms. So the first one back back. Back. I cannot even understand exactly what is being saying this. Backward. This one was much more clear, so it's backward. Backward. Back. And here we have another one. Zero. And it's also very clear that it's zero. So we will have a data set with people saying different people saying these words here and we are trying to build a classifier that will listen machine listen these uh, audio files and then it will tell us wh what command it was one of these labels here so we have our data set we split it to training and the test set and now what we are going to do is to format the data. It is a good chance to apply some transformations using Torch Audio. So one transformation that we are going to do is that we will, instead of using 16 kilohertz, we will use 8 kilohertz. And here we can use Torch Audio transforms resample. And we are going from the original sampling rate to the new sampling rate. The new sampling rate is 8 kilohertz. You can also, for example, listen to back the same file from here. Back here, we were using 16 kilohertz, and now we are using 8 kilohertz. Here, we are defining some functions to make it easy to go from the index to the label. So we have this define label to index, we have 
a word to return the touch tensor labels index word. And here we have index to label, so we will pass it an index and we will return uh, the label. So, for example, if we have a word yes, then the index, we use the label to index there, the word. So let's run the cell. We have yes, the 33, and then we convert to this index and then we convert back to the label. We go here, there is 0, here is 34, and yes, it's 33. Another thing that we can do is to make all tensors in a batch to have the same length by padding with zeros. So this is very common when we are dealing with audio recordings that they have different sizes and we want that all the audio files they are they have the same size so we can pad with zeros this has its uh, advantages and disadvantages of course if you're classifying something and then the, um, you're in, in the same data set you have files that are one second long and many files there are 20 seconds long and if you just fill with zeros a file of one second long probably a model can detect just the presence of zeros instead of detecting actually the content or find some hidden patterns in your audio file but if also if you want to use batches the requirement that the batches the files in the batch they have the same size. So here we are using pad sequence. So this is to pad the sequence. And here we have for example we can use the batch size of 256. This we are using the data loader we mentioned previously. So we have the train loader and the test loader here we have group the list of tensors into a batched tensor of tensors targets so let's run this um, cell by the way this is not a PyTorch tutorial I will not go deep into this i'm just showing how to use pytorch together with torch audio later on it's not in this tutorial but we will include how to use tensor board but if you want to go deeper in pytorch then you can easily go through this tutorial so depending on the area you want to attack to learn and choose some tutorials. There are beginner tutorials, intermediate tutorials, advanced. You can work with audio, video images, text. So there are different tutorials. Also the PyTorch documentation. Here we are going just use this example so we can have a full machine learning experiment and use TensorBoard together with it and Torch Audio. So now we have our training set, our data, our testing set. We did some transformations, so we pre-processed. We did some padding. We can also, for example, if we want to, we can normalize audio, the pre-processing. And here now we will define the network. In this case, we will use uh, CNNs, convolutional neural networks, and this specific architecture is already a defined model after uh, M, what is it called, the M5 network. It's defined, described here in this paper. So here you have the paper. A very deep convolutional neural networks for raw 
waveforms and they go into detail of how they came into this architecture. This architecture we can see we have input equals to 1, output is equal to 35. When we have 35 labels, so 35 speech commands, there is a stride of 16 and the number of channels equals to 32. Then we have a convolutional neural network, kernel size equals to 80. And we have batch normalization, we have max pooling, and we have another convolutional layer. This time we have the kernel size to 3. Then more batch normalization, max pooling, another layer. Then we have now um, the input is the number of channels, and the output is two times the number of channels, kernel size also equals to 3. So this is how we are defining the layers. Here we have the activation functions. So we are using ReLU, for example, after the first convolutional layer, we have the pooling that is defined here. We have this second convolution layer. Then we have ReLU again. Here, and in the end, we are using the log softmax. It is uh, in when we are dealing with classification, not binary, but multi. We have multiple classes. We use often the log max function. And here we have our model M5 defined here. And then we will print this model. Here we will count the parameters. So it's the number of trainable parameters, for example, of our model. So let's run the cell. And we have here, we have 26,900 and 15 parameters here have description of our model and finally we are going to use the ADAM optimizer the learning rate of 0 0.01 and a weight decay of 0 0.001 and we will also now use a scheduler this scheduler will decrease the learning rate after 20 epochs. So here we are using a scheduler. Miser is divided in here. The add Adam. Then the step size is 20. Gamma 0.1. And this will reduce the learning after 20 epochs by a factor of 10. Now we can define a training function. This function will be used to train our model and here we have the classic we calculate loss we have the optimizer zero grad loss backward optimizer step here we print we're logging some statistics of training and then here we are using this um, progress bar we are updating the progress bar this progress bar here is using what we showed up here which is this uh, PQDM when we look for this QDM you will see here there will be with the QDM as a progress bar or epoch in range certain range then train test this is a scheduler step for find earlier here the scheduler inside this function when we train also need to update progress bar at this point we need to look into how to use tensor board together with this tutorial for that we can also go back here to this pytorch tutorials and we can see there is a tutorial for tensor board 
we can click on this to explain how to use TensorBoard together with PyTorch. But as we are in Google Colab environment using a Google Colab notebook, we need special things how to use TensorBoard with Colab. And there is a tutorial that is how to use TensorBoard in Google Colab. This is from medium.com at IMSDT using TensorBoard in Google Colab with PyTorch. And here we will explain how to use the TensorBoard notebook extension or using ngrok like we've seen before. When we use the TensorBoard extension, notebook extension, there is one thing that the output is uh, displayed, so the tensor board will open inside the cell output. And if we use ngrok, we can tunnel, and then we will access to a URL, and when we can display the results in a separate window. And this is what we are going to use. For that, I will, before this training here, I will add some cells and we will have to install Py and Grok and also we will use TensorBoard so we need some configurations. So first we will install Py and Grok. Now we terminate any existing open tunnels if they exist with ngrok queue and here we set up our authorization token. We've used this many times along different tutorials on this series, and there's a special tutorial on how to use Py and Grok. One of the first tutorials, you go to the playlist, Introduction to Google Colab for Research, that will be there in the description how you can use and Grok, but this is what we're using here. So now everything is configured when we uh, have Tensor board running on a certain, certain port, we just use ngrok.connect to this port. We will have a URL, public URL that we can access over the internet to have tensor board running in this visualization. To use tensor board, we need to create a directory for where tensor board stores its logs. So we are using this will be the logs base direct will be called runs. We are using port OS and then making this directory and exist so we can run the cell. And now we see that we have directory runs here. When we uh, import the data set, also copy it commands here. All these directories here with files. We are ready to turn it when TensorBoard is ready, but before we need to configure TensorBoard. Yeah. Starting the configuration here, creating this directory that is going to be used by TensorBoard for its logs. Now we can go back to this tutorial here using TensorBoard in PyTorch, and you find it here GitHub PyTorch tutorials here. GitHub PyTorch tutorials. There will be a lot of tutorials here. So what we are going to do is to import Torch and import the summary writer. If we take a look here in this example, when it's um, an example to log scalars, we see that there is this writer defined as a summary writer here. And here in the training function, after it calculates this loss, so to this writer, it uses this add scalar and it puts the loss, the epoch. And here, after training, this model, so train model, the number of iterations, then 
uses this writer.flush. And this flush method to make sure that all pending events have been written to disk. And here, if we go to Torch, it use TensorBoard tutorials. There will be more tutorials on how to use this uh, TensorBoard with PyTorch. Here, for example, we are adding scalars. Here we have our training function. So after the loss, we can use writer dot add scalar similar to what we are doing here. Then let's put loss train loss apple. So we have a training function that is going to use a summary writer to, to write scalars into the tensor board and here we will have some functions to evaluate training so we have a function to count the number of correct predictions find the most likely label index for each element in the batch and here we have a testing function that's going to be used to test the model you notice here that to train we use model.train to test we use model.evolve here we would have our predictions we count the number of correct predictions and we also update a progress bar we have a training function here and also we have a testing function here so let's run this cell here also run this cell here and finally we can train and test the network so here we can define the number of epochs the logging intervals where number logging interval is how often we are going to update going to be called for example here printing some statistics and then we can start running this uh, experiment so as we've seen here in this example after it trains it flushes so we can also here it will train we can flush and when we are not going to use anymore we can close this writer in, in here now we go back to this tutorial we are going to start the tensor board in the background so we are using this get ipython system raw tensor board log directory we are using port 6006 so let's add here before we start running let's add a code cell let's start this um, tensor board unfortunately there is some problem when we try to run tensor board the background so we'll need to have a workaround here to we'll load the tensor board extension so unfortunately we will have to start the um, tensor board using this extension it will be playing here this cell we have tensor board but we can also connect and grok to this port 13,000 we have this instance of tensor board also here so we don't need to keep looking here we can close this cell but we have tensor board here 
see that there is no active uh, dashboards because we didn't write anything event files but if we start running here there is this writer inside the train it should run so here as i explained before we have our number of epochs equals to two our log interval this is an array to a list to keep um, track on the losses here is to update the progress bar here we have with tqdm as progress bar and then we will run for epoch in range of one to the number of epochs plus one we will train then we will also test scheduler step then we uh, have writer flush and writer flush. so let's run the cell so i have a typo here instead of using add scalar i use add, add scalars but now if we fix here so before was add scalar so let's use add scalar and now we can run so we see here this is the progress bar fine is training epoch uh, one and now when we update here our tensor board we already see something here we can for example let it reload data every 15 seconds so it's training still for epoch one see that loss going down so we reached 50 percent is the end of test epoch one had an accuracy of 67 percent just in the first epoch with the loss high and now something like one or 0 0.9 So it finished training just after two epochs we achieved an accuracy of 71 percent and here we have our tensor board and the here the scalars we have here for our time series loss the train now let's see what happens when we run this experiment for more epochs we achieved something around 70 percent accuracy now we'll run for 30 epochs so let's start it will take quite some time to run let's see story saying that after 21 epochs we achieve 85 percent accuracy let's see what we will end up after 30 epochs now we have data here and also we uncommented here so after it's trained it will plot the training loss versus of iterations and it should be a plot similar to what we have here in support we also have a pencil board here running in the cell. Unfortunately, I could not uh, find out why I couldn't start tensor board in the background. There was an error, but I had a workaround. So we pencil board notebook extension makes life easier. So the training is finished. We have here this plot. The training laws started very high here and here in there. So, tensor board we can see better. And we see here this drop here. This we also notice that our scheduler would change the learning rate after 20 epochs, which is 
here in this region and we have a drop from more or less 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 plus we have an accuracy of 86 percent at this point so now we can for example define function to predict we use the model to predict the label of the waveform here we have for example one taking one sample from the training set let's make a modification here and listen to audio file so it should be zero and it predicted zero so let's listen zero zero indeed it's a zero so let's take another run number let's see uh, 100 should be backward and it predicted backward backwards backwards take one more let's see uh, perhaps 500 should be backward and predict backward. backward backward try another one let's see thousand bad and it's bad 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 now let's see if we find some incorrect classification in here otherwise not show up We have uh, was uh, expected to be right, and it understood nine. Right, right. And now we can also try by ourselves. So I have another tutorial that uh, describes how to record audio inside Google Collab. We have here this function that will record one second of uh, audio and then it will use the model to predict so let's see what it happens i tried it before many times and i could never get anything like a correct prediction but let's see this time so i'll run and i'll say for example go and let's see what it predicts go 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 so i said go but it predicted zero so now i'll try to say zero and see what happens zero zero i said zero and it predicted house one more example so oh i uh wasn't too fast fast enough uh, it's just noise and it predicted six so let me try one more time six it just got the end of uh, what i'm saying in predicted two so we see that even though with the training that it was uh, an accuracy of 85 percent but when we try new audio it got all wrong in our tests that's it for today we have here our tensor board running with pytorch we use this speech command recognition using torch audio we have this full example using a gpu and using pencil board inside Google Colab. Thank you very much, and I see you next time.